we are still at the early stages of learning about resistance mechanisms in the clinic to the CDK4-6 inhibitors, and we don't have any clinical data yet that gives us clear guidance about which therapeutic options have efficacy after progression on CDK4-6 inhibitors. There was an interesting paper by Nick Turner and colleagues from the Paloma 3 trial of fulvestrant and palbociclib in the second line metastatic setting, looking at CT DNA before and after treatment with palbociclib, and about 5% of patients had new mutations in RB, um, and that was probably a mechanism of resistance to the palbociclib. Interestingly, there was a bit of an increase in estrogen receptor ESR1 mutations. Again, maybe that was a bit more of a resistance mechanism to the fulvestrant, you know, potentially. Um, there was a little bit of an increase as well in PIK3CA mutations, PI3 kinase mutations, also some HER2 mutations. So it looks like a variety of mechanisms. Carlos Artiega and colleagues have shown that FGFR1 amplification can be a resistance mechanism to CDK4-6 inhibitors. So it's actually gonna be a variety of mechanisms. Um, Preclinically, the PI3 kinase pathway appears to be quite important, so that if you then block the estrogen receptor CDK4-6 and the PI3 kinase pathway, you can get some very good anti-tumor synergy against the cancer. So I think the PI3 kinase pathway will be a very important one resistance-wise. We uh, await the FDA approval of the first oral PI3 kinase inhibitor for breast cancer patients, Alpelacid, based on the SOLAR-1 clinical trial results, and that was with fulvestrant plus alpelacid showing substantial improvement in progression-free survival for the patients with the PIK3CA mutations. About 40% of ER-positive metastatic breast cancer patients, their cancers have a PIK3CA mutation. So what I think was, is going to happen once that agent's available to us is that when our patients are receiving first-line CDK4-6 inhibitor therapy, we will probably, you know, send off their tissue for a, the analysis of the PI3 kinase. Most of these mutations um, are present in the primary breast cancer, so that you can utilize the primary breast cancer to do the next-gen sequencing and see the PI3 kinase mutations. Interestingly, though, it's, it also looks like uh, CT DNA in the metastatic setting will also be useful to find PI3 kinase mutations. Uh, so I think that upon progression on CDK4-6, you know, utilizing CT DNA over time, I think will end up being useful to us. So we, we await, we don't have that agent available now, but over time, I think we will have the L-Pelacid and we'll be able to utilize it upon progression on CDK4-6 inhibitors for those patients with a PIK3CA mutation. So assuming that this patient does well with the abemocyclib and the letrozole, um, upon progression with multiple liver metastasis, probably my, um, my next recommendation would probably be single agent capecitabine outside of a clinical trial. There are clinical trials that I would, would immediately wanna put her on, but outside of a clinical trial, probably capecitabine I do utilize um, Everolimus um, and Eximestane for some patients, so that's a possibility for the patient uh, as well. But in my experience with diffuse liver metastasis, generally I would go on to capecitabine next for the patient. Although the Everolimus would be something I would consider potentially after the um, capecitabine. So, um, and then um, hopefully, you know, if she is a PIC3CA, if her cancer is, has PIK3CA mutation, I would consider alpelacid down the line for her as well. But if she were not mutant on PIK3CA, probably capecitabine and then consideration of the Everolimus eximestane.